वेलकम बैक इन्वेस्टर्स इंश्योरेंस इज ए फिनेंशियल व्हीकल विच हेल्प्स स्प्रेड रिस्क बाय टेकिंग द रिस्क फ्रॉम एन इंडिविजुअल एंड स्प्रेडिंग इट अराउंड द कम्युनिटी द इंडिविजुअल इज एबल टू गो अबाउट देयर पर्सनल और बिजनेस लेवल एंड स्प्रेड दैट रिस्क फ्रॉम फिनेंशियल रूइंस कंसिडर वन पर्सन ए एंड अनदर पर्सन बी ए टेल्स टू बी दैट he will give b 1000 rupees but if he loses his phone then b has to buy a new phone to a if b agrees to this terms of a then it's a insurance business right there insurance companies makes money since they evaluate all possible risks and decides whether it is worth the deal again getting back to person a and b say this person b promises 100 others that he will get them a new phone if they lose it provided they give him 1000 rupees each so 100 people and 1000 rupees each is like 1 lakh rupees so if in a worst case out of 100 if even 5 loses the mobile and say the mobile is worth 10000 rupees each then 50000 is the payout for person b and rest 50000 is clear profit for him if he insures say 1000 people instead of 100 for the same for the same deal of 1000 rupees per person then he increases his chance of creating more cash flow and profitability person b has to keep some amount of collateral premium for the possible claim of the lost mobiles like the above case of 50000 rupees for the five mobiles lost so the same is anticipated by various calculations and permutative predictions by person b and rest he reinvests in other high return investment instruments like, like stocks bonds money market etc to yield higher returns and multiply this profit other than the premium collected also it is to be noted that there can be a larger claim as well and sometimes in some year maybe the entire premium which is collected may be offsetted by the claims which are coming in so you would be wondering then what is the profit of a insurance business if all the claim is eating away the premium which is been collected so there comes the concept of float so whatever premium is collected as i told in the earlier example whatever premium is collected other than the claim the amount which is invested in various financial instruments or financial investments they will create return for the business but yes it is to be noted that there is always a gestation period for the insurance business as in if the company starts today then it will not create positive cash flow or a decent profit in one year or two years it takes more than 10 to 12 or even 15 years to establish a business in insurance whatever he is investing in various financial instruments they fetch decent returns to him so that even though the claim is higher the profits generated from those investments will offset all the claims and also give him a positive cash flow and hence greater profits an important terminology in insurance business is the float in short float is the money that a insurance business gets to hold on to between the time policy holders pay premiums and the time they make claims on their policies that is the difference between the premium collected and the claims paid out is the insurance float though not that earnings intensive as that of an insurance business it is similar to how a bank will collect deposits from its depositors and invest that money through loans and get differential interest percentage on that amount and then repay that money in future with a withdrawal the insurer receives premium upfront and pay later this collect now pay later model leaves the insurance company with large sums called float as explained above 
which can be invested in high return financial instruments so talking about insurance float warren buffett frequently refers to insurance float in his annual letters as having the following characteristics so mainly there are four points as you can see on my screen one is others people's money money we temporarily hold in our insurance operations that does not belongs to us that is come in his 2007 annual letter second is little or no funding cost he mentions that the float is free as long as insurance underwriting breaks even again in 2007 annual letter another point he tells about the float is it is enduring if we break even on underwriting our investments can be viewed as an encumbered source of value for shareholders again in his 1997 annual letter he mentions that economic value is different from the accounting value though float is shown on our balance sheet as a liability it has a value to berkshires greater than a equal amount of net worth would have had in 2011 annual letter he mentions that the true value of his liability is far lower than the accounting liability so that is how warren thinks about the insurance business and the important concept of float so again to simplify float is policy holders money we have minus the policy holders money we don't have so further how to derive this float i will mention in my next session on analysis of insurance companies and their financial statements so before getting into float and its real concept and real case examples let me clarify that in indian market the term float is actually not used in fact this term float that is float for an insurance business is actually introduced by warren buffett actually in financial terms a financial float is the money in the banking system that is counted twice for a brief time because of delays in processing checks float distorts the measurement of the money supply and complicates the implementation of monetary policy so let us not get into that financial float the float which we are mentioning here or warren buffett calls as a float in an insurance business is completely different so as i explained float is the money that an insurance company gets to hold on to between the time policy holders pay premium and the time they make claims on their policies that is float is the difference between the premium collected and the claims paid out now another concept in insurance business is the reinsurance so for explaining the concept of reinsurance let us again get back to person a and b now say if person b has to reduce his risk of more claims in case of a catastrophic global event say again to less complicate in our case of person a and b say one international thief is stealing majority of the mobile phones from person b's insurance policy holders so person b may not be able to buy new phones to his majority of customers so then comes the concept of reinsurance wherein person b sells his 1000 rupees phone policy for say 700 rupees to a reinsurance company who takes the liability on them and rest 300 rupees go to person b so that is like 700 out of 1000 goes to the reinsurance business who is taking the majority of the risk and only 300 rupees out of 1000 rupees goes to person b as a premium collection still 1000 policy holders and 300 rupees each means 3 lakh rupees which will serve as a profit to person b because majority of the risk has been transferred to the reinsurance business by paying them 700 rupees each so this 3 lakh rupees which is 300 rupees per person into 1000 people is completely risk free 
सो मेजर इंश्योरेंस कंपनी नॉर्मली सेल्स देयर इंश्योरेंस टू मल्टीपल री इंश्योरेंस कंपनीज टू मेटिगेट द रिस्क बिकॉज इफ यू रीसेल्स द पॉलिसी टू ओनली वन री इंश्योरेंस कंपनी देन इट कैन हैव ए ग्रेटर थ्रेट कंपेयर टू मेटिगेटिंग द रिस्क बाई सेलिंग द पॉलिसीज टू मल्टीपल री इंश्योरेंस बिजनेसेस सो इंश्योरेंस इज ए वे बाय विच क्रिएटिंग कैश फ्लो फॉर मोर लूक्रेटिव इन्वेस्टमेंट्स अगेन गेटिंग बैक टू दिस कंसेप्ट ऑफ री इंश्योरेंस इन द नेम ऑफ मेटिगेटिंग द रिस्क इट मे नॉट बी दैट प्रॉफिटेबल टू सेल द पॉलिसीज टू री इंश्योरेंस कंपनीज बिकॉज लाइक इन अवर केस ऑफ थाउजेंड रुपीज सेवन हंड्रेड रुपीज गोज टू री इंश्योरेंस कंपनी विच इज ए मेजर चंक ऑफ द पॉलिसी प्रीमियम बींग कलेक्टेड फ्रॉम द कस्टमर्स सो दिस एक्चुअली रिड्यूसेज द फ्लोट एंड वॉट एवर द इंश्योरेंस कंपनी गेट्स टू इन्वेस्ट इन द फ्लोट एंड गेट रिटर्न इज किल्ड बाय द री इंश्योरेंस बिजनेस सो कंपनीज लाइक बर्षा रातवे has got very minimal investments in reinsurance and majority risk is taken by them only since they have got large capital with them and because of the larger size of the berkshire hathaway and hence whatever money is collected as float is effectively reinvested into quality businesses and those businesses generate them greater earnings and as i mentioned earlier these profits helps settle the claim and also multiply the capital over longer term and make them rich so a reinsurance helps mitigate the risk for the main insurance company so reinsurance is like insuring a insurance company so the main things which a reinsurance will help is transfers the risk increases the capacity because why it is increasing the capacity the main purpose of going with for a reinsurance by the insurance company is that it transfers risk to the reinsurance company thus reducing the risk for the main insurance company and also it increases the capacity like if the risk is transferred to various other reinsurance companies the capacity of taking more policies and more risk by the main insurance company is more because it is been redistributed to various reinsurance companies so it increases capacity and hence more premium and hence more profit and also it prevents risk of concentration as i told earlier that various insurance companies splits or redistributes the various policies to a set of reinsurance companies so that the risk is evenly distributed among them another important thing to note here for an insurance business is it is a capital intensive business because as i mentioned earlier you need to have lot of capital which is actually required for paying back to the policy holders in case of claim so smaller companies cannot have an insurance business you need to have a huge capital base for the insurance business to be run so again i ask you to recall my earlier session on moat unique competitive advantage so this capital intensive business is a unique moat for insurance businesses so that it doesn't allow every new player or new players to get into the business because of the capital intensity if the premium collected exceeds the total expenses and eventual losses then the underwriting profit also adds to the investment income produced from the float this combination allows an insurance company to enjoy the use of free money but it is also to be noted that in hope of this happy results attract intense competition so vigorous in most years as to cause the insurance industry as a whole to operate at significant underwriting loss this loss in effect is what industry pays to hold its floats actually this cost is fairly low but in some catastrophe ridden years the cost from the underwriting losses eats up the income derived from the use of float 
float hens is like people depositing huge sums as policy premium with insurance companies and company could invest it and reap its benefits without any payment of interest back to the people another vital note is that not all companies can generate a large sum of cost free float in most years premiums may be inadequate to cover claims plus expenses consequently the industry's overall return on tangible equity has for many decades fallen for short of that achieved by index returns floats can be good if the insurance business has good business strategies of investing the floats in quality return generating investment instruments and that even if claim rates are high the floats generate enough profit in addition to the insurance premium collected so that overall there is adequate profit generation to cite an example warrens berkshire hathaway had a float which has gone from 16 million dollar in 1967 when it entered the business to as huge a sum as 123 billion dollar on 2018 ending this is one of the major investment capital for berkshire hathaway and that has consistently grown the book value of the berkshire hathaway at more than 20% cagr since 1965 also there are many instances around the world where insurance companies have failed following inadequacy of capital and inefficient management a classic case is the insolvency of the great insurance company in australia named HIH Insurance Limited a 10 billion dollar company going into complete bust in early 2003 if you see not all companies can generate huge profits from floats only those companies with efficient managers like that of Berkshire Hathaway the insurance business which is Geico which is holds is able to generate good profits effectively utilizing the float so somebody goes for an insurance mainly to protect against a loss which you are unable or willing to bear yourself or which is also like that the insurance is selling at a cheaper premium that you get attracted to it and buy yes many a times the second case is also true it is not just the requirement but also the cheapness of the premium many times is a comparison for various people and they buy that so mainly types of insurance i'll briefly cover here there are two types of insurance mainly which is one is life insurance and another is general insurance so life insurance will have this traditional term insurance endowment plans and it is unit link policies which is ulips and general insurance include car medical marine property industrial insurances etc so as our topic is investing and how to analyze insurance based companies i will not divert from my topic and concentrate more on types of insurances because these types of insurances like term insurance annuities endowment plans car medical property insurances everything is easily available and accessible to you so i will restrict my description of types of insurances only to what i have explained now so in analysis of insurance company you will have to look at the promoter's integrity management quality understanding the business already i have explained how the insurance company works so that is also clear now predictability of the insurance business like if some catastrophe is coming are they able to withstand the capital intensive nature of that claims which is going to happen in that catastrophe so that predictability you should have the how much cash is company having how much premium is collecting so those things you will get from the 
financial reports of the company so regarding the fin- analyzing the financial reports of the or the financial statements of the insurance company i am covering in my next session so not to worry about that also like analyzing insurance company you should look at its roe return on equity roc return on capital employed both the things i have explained in my earlier session also you should look at the debt to equity ratio whether it is taking or lifting heavy debts normally insurance companies will have a lower debt because already they are funded with these floats which are helping them to invest in whatever investments they want to invest in for generating good profits and also to take care of the expenses so that's a free money coming from the customers so they normally don't take huge debts even in indian market the insurance companies like sbi life insurance hdfc life and even icici prudential all these are having debt to equity ratio either zero or less than 0.2 to 0.3 which is very low so like i told unlike analyzing other companies insurance business is completely specific and your analysis will be different from that of analyzing a normal business again another interesting fact is that whatever we call as a float which is available for investment in the balance sheet of the insurance company the float appears in the liability side of the balance sheet and not actually on the asset so if the liability is high it doesn't mean that company is having more liabilities but actually the amount which is invested in various investment instruments is coming under liabilities so these facts we will analyze in our next session of analyzing the financial statements of the insurance business and i will clarify the facts there further so how a insurance business works is like first the policy which is a contract between the insurance company and policy holder is formed for getting the policy from various customers they have got various agents or outlets so main companies like sbi and all they utilize their own banks and even they have other agents so they give commission to agents so this all becomes the expenses for the company so once the policy is formed the insurance company receives upfront premium money plus the regular premium which is yearly or monthly or whatever it is based on the type of the insurance they have opted for third thing is pay out a lump sum or annuity in future depending on death or survival of the policy holder now in ulips ulips are more like a mutual fund so it's a investment a sort of investment plus insurance but i always prefer you either go for a complete insurance or a complete investment like stocks or bonds don't mix up insurance and returns that is investments which as per me is not the correct way of doing it so what are the major revenue generating sources for the insurance company like i explained earlier in detail one is the premium income that is the policy holders buying various insurances by giving out the premium to the insurance company that is one income and other major source of income is the investment income which is like interest dividend or capital gains from the investments of bonds stocks and other investments which the company has done using the float and other investments which is done by the company using the float so expenses include commissions operating expenses benefits paid to policy holders bonus given to participating policy holders so all these things are expenses for the insurance company this again has to be recovered from either from the premium they have paid otherwise the investment returns from the float now coming to the last part of this session i recall a speech by warren buffett in berkshire hathaway's annual meet he said insurance businesses gives them a float that other people's money which they are temporarily holding 
बट गेट्स रीजनरेटेड ऑल द टाइम बक्शर हाथ वे हेज ए वन ट्वेंटी फोर बिलियन डॉलर दैट पीपल हेज गिवन दैम थ्रू वेरियस पॉलिसी प्रीमियम्स दिस आई हेड मैंशन अर्लियर इन मई सेशन ही कंपेर्स इट टू समन हैविंग ए बैंक दैट जस्ट कंसिस्ट ऑफ वन गाय and people coming and depositing this 124 billion dollar and promise not to withdraw it forever bakshar hathave got a very good insurance business which took a very long time for them to develop like i told about the gestation period so in indian companies also whether it is sbi icsa icsa prudential or even hdfc life all of them has started in early 2010 all of them has started in early 2000 and now in 2021 they have covered almost 20 plus years since for all insurance businesses they have this gestation period initially say 10 to 12 years to establish the business enabling to fetch sizable returns money from the float of the insurance business and then whatever claims can be settled easily since the float has multiplied over time which doesn't happen in initial years of starting the insurance business bakshar athave's insurance business has earned money for the money which has been literally given to them for nothing through its wise investments of float as per warren buffett the concept of writing off the risk of huge claims under worse situation through offloading the policies to external reinsurance business will not help generate sizable returns on investments since the money available for the investments in the form of float would be lesser as sizable amount has been paid to the reinsurance company this also i had earlier mentioned bakshar athave has this unique advantage that they have larger assets which are much in excess to the requirement of any capital requirement for a natural disasters like hurricane tsunami etc as claims warren mentions that as a stand alone business the insurance business may not be a good business unless like berkshire hathaway the float is wisely invested in quality businesses to earn decent returns so don't be under impression that all insurance businesses are profit making we really need to dig deep into their financial statements or their business model and need to see whether they are busting up all their premium or profits in the reinsurance companies but also it is vital to understand whether they are generating enough flow to invest and make good returns out of it so again in india we have got this regulatory organization called irda insurance regulatory and development authority which regulates the insurance business so it is not that you can invest majority of the float in high return investments there are various rules by irda say some amount should be invested in bonds or government bonds like many times it is 40% so only remaining amount is available for investing in high return instruments again this is based on various insurances life general or annuity so based on various insurance types and risk levels this investment in securities are defined by irda this is as a part of risk mitigation for the policy holders but actually this rules will restrict the probable returns of the investments for the insurance businesses so the insurance businesses has to wisely choose the investments within the irda norms and generate profit so that they can generate good profits for running the insurance business and also take away the profits to increase their book value so coming back to the warren buffett's berkshire hathaway meet in that meet charlie munger adds that insurance business is a mediocre business for most since generating profit is a well balanced intelligent skill of a manager like tony so tony again his actual name is mr olsa nicely who is the ceo of government employees insurance company inc 
that is Gaiko. So Gaiko is the insurance business of Bakshar Atave. So so Tony has been intelligent enough to generate this huge profits from insurance business. Warren Buffett says that Tony generated 50 billion US dollar from the insurance business by utilizing this float effectively. So now that you have understood about the insurance business in depth, we will try to analyze and try to look into the financial statements of insurance companies in the next session and again have a in detail analysis of Indian insurance companies and try to understand how they are performing and how to invest in them. Till then, happy investing.